Thanks for coming out. Um, I'm going to be focusing on hip pain in the athletes, but we can answer questions afterwards about other sports medicine topics. Um, <clears throat> we'll kind of go through some uh, causes of hip pain in athletes, uh, ways to prevent it, and, um, and, and some of the most common, uh, common things I see in my office when dealing with this topic. Um, a little bit about me, just real quick. Uh, I went to USC School of Medicine down south. Uh, I stayed there and did my orthopedic residency. Um, I, I'm fellowship trained in sports medicine um, in Santa Monica. I worked with uh, Chivas Major League Soccer, the U.S. women's uh, and men's soccer team, Amgen Tor Torre, California, and spent a lot of time at Pepperdine with their athletic program. Uh, moved up here about seven years ago. I, my practice is pretty much sports medicine, uh, although I see a lot of trauma and general orthopedics as well. Um, I focus on minimally invasive surgeries and arthroscopy, and I have a special focus on hip injuries, um, and hip arthroscopy is one of the things I specialize in. So when talking about hip pain in athletes, uh, basically athletes of any age can be affected by this. I see athletes um, all the way from grade school up to older adults that still participate in athletics that develop hip pain. Um, some of our younger kids with hip pain uh, have special injuries because they have open growth plates, they have growing bones. They're predisposed to different problems than adults. Uh, some of our adult athletes uh, really get exposed to overuse, especially in runners that don't cross train. Uh, so we see specific injuries in that group. Uh, and then in our older athletes, we see a lot of degenerative arthritis and people that want to remain active uh, and stay busy and, and, and keep running and keep doing other things. So there's a full spectrum of ages that hip pain can affect. Also, certain sports are more common to see uh, with hip pain than others. Running and track are a couple of big ones uh, due to overuse. Uh, soccer, football, and other uh, contact sports like rugby tends to cause a lot of hip problems, and, uh, which are very different than the hip problems we see in our running athletes. Uh, and dancers uh, are a special group that uh, develops hip pain and hip problems of a uh, certain variety. But in the bottom line is any athlete participating can be exposed to trauma or overuse uh, leading to hip pain. Um, one of the first things I talk to my patients about when they come in with hip pain is when people talk about hip pain, it means different things to different people. Um, if you have pain on the side of your hip, kind of out here, uh, that's, you know, people call that hip pain, but it's not really the hip joint. And uh, so determining when someone comes in where their hip pain is helps us figure out what's causing their hip pain and how to treat it. Uh, hip pain in the joint itself tends to present as groin pain, and hip pain in the back or in the buttock can be a sign of other problems, nerve compressions or back injuries. So just knowing where the pain is coming from, everyone tends to call hip pain, helps us figure out the diagnosis. First uh, thing we'll talk about is one of the most common hip injuries are muscle strains, or what we call a groin pull or an adductor strain in the hip. Um, Basically, this is a large muscle that pulls your legs together, the adductor muscles. And a strain is when the muscle is stretched or torn uh, beyond where it's supposed to go. So this is common in our court and, uh, and field athletes. So we see a lot of this in basketball or other activities where twisting and pivoting is involved. Um, best treatment for these types of injuries is always prevention. These are injuries that can be prevented most of the time through adequate warm-up and stretching. Um, and then when they, are, when they do happen, uh, there's often a lot of bruising and basically activity is limited um, and gradual progression. There's, this is not typically a surgical injury. It's a very common injury though that we see in the office. Uh, hip pointer, um, football season, uh, we'll see a lot of this stuff. A hip pointer is a direct uh, contusion or injury to the side of the pelvis. And uh, it, this is seen in sports like football and rugby and other collision sports. Um, typical treatment for this most of the time is rest, anti-inflammatories, um, gradual progression of activities. If there's a deformity in the pelvis or extreme swelling or difficulty weight bearing, that you probably need x-rays and further workup, but a typical hip pointer is just treated symptomatically. Uh, another common injury we see are stress fractures. This is a good example of someone you might see with a stress fracture. It's usually a female. Um, a stress fracture is not a typical fracture that you'd see from someone falling off a ladder or falling down and breaking a bone you'd expect to see in the emergency room. A stress fracture is a normal bone that gets exposed to abnormal stress repeatedly. 
And over time, without rest, uh, the bone can actually break down and start to actually break or fracture. <clears throat> These are seen in distance runners, again, more common in women. Uh, hip stress fractures. Stress fractures can occur in any weight-bearing portion of the body, but hip stress fractures usually start as groin pain with activity. Runners keep running despite that, and then it develops into constant pain, and the bone can actually break, as seen in this picture here, which can lead to devastating consequences. So when we see someone with a suspected hip fracture, this is taken very seriously. X-rays are obtained, which usually don't show anything at first, uh, and often an MRI is necessary to figure this out. Uh, treatment for this uh, depends on severity, sometimes just rest and crutches, sometimes surgery, actually, to stabilize these fractures so that athletes can continue to participate. And uh, we see many marathon runners and distance runners that end up needing surgery to fix these problems. And so whenever these are suspected, usually people end up in my office to, uh, to get this worked up and figured out. Uh, bursitis, this is something often that, uh, a very common ailment that we see in the office. Uh, the bursa and bursitis, uh, bursa is a fluid-filled sac over bony prominences. So in your hip, right on the side here over the trochanter, we have a bursa. And if that gets inflamed, we call that bursitis. Um, basically where this athlete's pointing here is they have pain right on the side of the hip. It hurts when you push on it. It hurts if you sleep on it. And that really helps in making the diagnosis. Treatment for this typically is conservative, uh, anti-inflammatory, stretching, ice. Uh, if it really is bad and people end up in my office, they're usually gonna have to go to physical therapy for stretching. Surgery, rarely required, but sometimes we do have to do surgery on bursitis. Uh, the next topic, impingement. This is much more um, on everyone's radar these days. I'm referred a lot more patients with impingement of the hip. Um, basically, the ball and socket of the hip is supposed to be round, and that should be a congruent joint. When the ball isn't round or when the socket's not the right shape, we have impingement in the hip. Um, they don't fit together properly. And this picture at the bottom, trying to fit a square peg into a round hole, is a good analogy for this kind of hip pain. Um, because of this mismatch, the more active people are, the more they get symptomatic. We see a lot of this in young athletes and football players. Uh, they become more active, and as the hip doesn't fit together correctly, it starts to cause damage to the joint. This can cause tears of the labrum or the gasket in the hip. It causes damage to the cartilage and really hampers function. So this becomes a big functional problem. This is a precursor to hip arthritis. So we're finding more and more that people with impingement are much more likely to develop arthritis later in life. Um, early treatment helps prevent further damage. And minimally invasive surgeries like arthroscopy can help to reshape the ball or reshape the socket so these fit together normally, allow people to get back, function better, and prevent more damage. Kind of dovetailing into that are labral tears. The labrum in the hip is a gasket around the ball and socket joint. You can get a tear of the labrum um, from extremes of motion. You can get a tear of the labrum from trauma. And you can get a tear of the labrum from impingement. So this is one of the things that goes along with when you have a mismatch in the ball and socket joint. Um, this picture here at the bottom is a pretty big labral tear seen at arthroscopy. Um, these often cause mechanical symptoms in the hip and pain deep in the groin. This can cause locking and catching. Often causes aching, uh, intermittent groin pain, and groin pain with activity. Uh, this is often also treated with repair if therapy and activity modification don't work. Uh, next topic is piriformis syndrome. Uh, this is something not seen as commonly, but often presents very differently than the other problems. This is usually pain uh, in the buttock and, and can cause numbness and tingling. Um, basically, the sciatic nerve, which is the big nerve seen at the bottom here, can be compressed from that muscle uh, over and over. And, and you see this in rowers. Uh, and cyclers. Um, causes dull buttock pain, can cause numbness and tingling, uh, can radiate down the back of the leg. So a lot of times people with piriformis syndrome will be misdiagnosed with sciatica from the back or other problems. Um, so a workup of the back is often necessary to make sure that that isn't the main problem. Treatment for this typically though is conservative. This typically does not need surgery. Uh, this is typically treated with uh, physical therapy, anti-inflammatories, ice, and activity modification. If it's a repetitive activity, sitting, rowing, or cycling, changing that up and cross-training can be very effective. 
Uh, degenerative arthritis, this is probably one of the most common causes of hip pain. Um, this, in our older athletes and people that remain active, arthritis can start to become a problem. Basically, it's a wearing out of the joint. So the cartilage in the joint tends to start to wear out, causes groin pain, hip pain, and activity problems. Uh, it also leads to stiffness. The joint doesn't move normally um, and really uh, interferes with activity and ability to exercise. This diagnosis of arthritis is usually made on just plain x-rays. Uh, it's very diagnostic for this problem. Activity modification can be very helpful. Weight-bearing activities that cause pain, if they're switched over to lower impact activities like cycling and swimming, a lot of people can tolerate exercise even though they have arthritis. If not, a hip replacement is often necessary. Preventing hip problems like this um, is obviously important. We've talked about that a little bit. Um, training errors are the most common, especially in runners. Uh, increasing workouts too quickly, increasing mileage too quickly, increasing intensity too quickly often leads to a lot of these problems. Um, insufficient rest between training, your body always needs time off to rest, to recover before going back to running. Uh, when that's not followed, that often leads to hip problems. Um, cross training is also important for our running athletes. Cross training with cycling, swimming, staying active but doing other sports can often help a lot of this. Uh, lack of stretching can uh, also lead to problems like groin strains we talked about earlier. And something I'm always telling my patients is to listen to their body. A lot of people end up in my office because they start to have hip pain or knee pain or shoulder pain and they continue doing the offending activity. People um, follow this mantra of no pain, no gain, and they go out and exercise on top of pain. It always leads to more problems. So listening to your body, when you start to have pain in a joint, changing what you're doing, modifying your activity, cross-training becomes very important. So just in a summary here, this is a very common problem I see in my practice. It causes severe limitations in participation, which gets very frustrating for athletes. Uh, rapid recovery is facilitated by a good diagnosis, an accurate diagnosis of the problem and appropriate treatment. Preventing an injury, always easier. Oh, every time, easier than trying to treat a problem after it's happened. And these few things, severe pain, swelling, loss of motion, difficulty weight bearing, those are all signs that you should probably see your doctor and have this looked at. This is not something you should just try to run through or continue uh, on treating this at home if you're having difficulty walking or severe swelling. So that's kind of my presentation about these most commonly seen things I see for hip pain.